Welcome back, fuckers. All right, today we're going to go through the next piece of the case one recovery puzzle, and we're going to go through the overhead break. Okay, so we've uh, just finished doing our uh, breaking the deck. We've come down from the holding pattern, we've hooked around, and we're about to go past the uh, carry and enter the uh, the case one recovery pattern. So let's read through just our super carry operations guide. So here we are. The overhead break. The landing pattern is entered with the radio command kiss off to your flight, followed by a sharp break turn to the left. The members of your flight will continue ahead and execute their own break to enter the pattern behind you. A 15 to 20 second break interval will correspond to a proper 40 to 60 second landing interval. If you're unable to break before 4 nautical mile, you will have to depart and re-enter the pattern. To accomplish this, maintain 800 feet until 5 nautical miles from the carrier, then climb to 1,200 feet and execute a left hand descending arc back to the initial. Break altitude is 800 feet and all breaks will be level. When established on downwind, you will descend to pattern altitude of 600 feet, configuring for landing and closely monitor the beam distance. The optimal distance varies from aircraft to aircraft, but one and a quarter to one and a half miles generally allows a smooth entry into the next phase called the groove. All right, so let's talk about what we're gonna go through today. All right, so let's uh, quickly break that down then. Hey, overhead break. So we are just right about to be going past the carrot when we get into the uh, into the sim in a second. We're at 800 feet, 350 knots, hooked down, configured for landing as best we can without having the gear and flaps down yet. So we're going to extend past the carrier and then enter our left hand overhead brake turn. Uh, so we're going to, for this one, go and extend past and we're going to go to, uh, we won't go any more than four. So we'll go like three and a half nautical mile. We're going to go into the brake turn. So we're going to keep an eye on the tack end on our HUD until we get to 3.5 nautical mile ahead of the uh, carrier tack end. Then we'll go into our brake turn. And the reason we're going to do that is because once we turn out of the, uh, the level turn there, we're going to descend down to 600 feet, put our gear and flaps down and configure ourselves for landing, which is going to be flying on speed at 600 feet. And the beam position, so as we come alongside uh, a beam the ship. We want to be looking at our tack end, and again, we want to be at 1.2 to 1.5 nautical mile distance, okay, from the carrier, and that's going to give us enough turning room to hook around and land on the carrier and catch that sweet three wire. So that is how it's going to work. So let's quickly switch over to the sim. So I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty, so we are in the jet. We are on active pause right now. Um, we're going to go through a couple of things before we do this. All right, so we're just confirmed we've got hooked down. Our rad out is set. We have got rad out also selected. I don't know if I said that in the other video. Make sure this is on a radar altimeter as well. Okay, barometric radar. Make sure it's on radar. And our radar or our barometric altimeter is at the same or the QFE that we're supposed to, which is 2993. So we're close enough there. Uh, hook bypass is in carrier because we land on the carrier. Any skid is off and we are good to go trap weight we are under okay we've got 5700 pound and we're good to go so we got the carrier just ahead of us there with 2.4 because we're active pause the actual carrier is cruising away from us now but we're going to go through this now so this is where having the scale is going to make more sense okay scale of 10 so if you look at our little aircraft indicator there, okay, so the wing tips, that's what we're going to be looking at. So as we go past the carrier, okay, that's the tack end there, we're going to go to 3.5 nautical mile, okay? We're going to go into a brake turn, left hand turn, and then when we roll wings level, if you're in the rough, uh, rough distance, a good little guide is if your wing tip is on the line, okay, the BRC line that you set up in the tack end. So our left wing tip is going to be touching that line, and that's going to be roughly the right area, okay? As a as a a given, given a fucking a rough estimate, okay? If your wing tip is way, there's a big massive gap between your wing tip and the line. You're going to be too far away, and if your wing tip's overlapping, you're going to be a bit too close. So you can kind of look at that as a quick quick eyeball and go, "Oh, I gotta gotta get some shit happening." Uh, also. Learning how to fly on speed, really important that you know how to do that. So if you haven't, I'll put the link uh, to the on speed tutorial that I did in the Hornet, learning how to fly on speed. Because if you can't fly on speed, you need to practice that until you can, all right? Because you land on the aircraft carrier using on speed flying techniques. Okay, you don't fly it like you would normally fly it 
fly the uh, the jet when you don't have the gearing flaps down. You want to practice on speed till you can kind of control all of your things. Okay, your altitude and your uh, nose position using on speed. So check it out if you haven't already. If you haven't and you can't fly on speed before you try and do any of this stuff, learn how to fly on speed because otherwise you're just going to balls it up and you're going to continually fuck it up. All right. So now let's go into unpause. We're going to fly past. And remember, we're going to look for 3.5 nautical mile past the ship. And we're going to enter a left-hand brake turn. When we go into the brake turn, all right, we are going to be running at 350 knots, 800 feet. We're going to roll over to the left, keeping our velocity vector on the horizon line. And we're going to pull roughly 3 Gs. And then as the, uh, as the speed comes down, all right, as soon as we get to 200 ish, you want to drop the G's down to 2. Okay, and don't get too crazy on it, just play it by feel. You just don't want to reef the stick around. Okay, don't just rip the stick around, otherwise, you're going to roll out way too quick. Um, you don't need speed brakes. So, what I do, I'll cruise in, bank over to the left, pull, chop the throttles to idle. Okay, throttles will go to idle, and I just coast around the turn until we get on the uh, reciprocal heading, and then we're going to commence our next piece of the puzzle which is configuring for landing getting that gear down flaps down and going to on speed conditions so let's see if we can do this in one hit hey all right no pressure here all right we're gonna unpause wish me luck fuckers so 800 feet 350 knots hook is down we're good to go i've got my controls up just so you guys can kind of see what we're doing here and the reason we're going to go four or almost four miles past the ship is give you guys more chance to get yourself configured for landing, get to 600 feet and on speed. Because um, otherwise it happens really quick and you end up going way too long past the, uh, the ship, which we'll go through in the next video after, which is going to be entering the groove. All right, so we're about to pass the carrier. We'll just check the deck. She is looking clear. Cruising on in. So again, just maintaining... 350, a little slow here. And now I'm just looking at my tack in. We're gonna go 3.5 nautical mile past the boat. All right, now we're a bit fast. So again, just play it by fuel. 1.6, 1.7, we're gonna to go to 3.5. All right, this is gonna be way, way, way longer than you need to. All right, but if you're just practicing, this is ideally what you want. Okay, and as you get better and more uh, proficient at it you can reduce this range that you enter your brake turn all right here we go and throttles to idle into our brake turn so i'm just looking trying to keep 800 feet roughly pulling two g's on the jet looking around and keeping an eye on these two dots here keep coming around so as those two dots get on the left side of our velocity vector, we're pretty much going to be at the All right, there we go. So now we're going to go gear down, flaps down, and we're going to descend down to 600 feet. All right, so we're just going to gently, gently trimming on speed now so I'm using my uh, nose trim up get the power in and we'll just pretty much go till we get a beam the ship all right so I'm just trimming it's looking nice and sweet now so my velocity vector is right in the middle of the e-bracket and we just cruise past the ship so you can see we're roughly here on the uh the HSI pretty much got our wingtip on the line. We're a little low, so let's pump the power up here. And again, I'm flying on speed. So if you look at our uh, carrier distance here, 1.4. So we're right on the sweet spot of when we're just about to go into the other uh, into the groove. All right, so there we go. We'll just pause it totally so the uh, carrier doesn't steam past it there. But that is pretty much what you want to do. All right, so if you have a look there again, we are 1.4 miles abeam the carrier. 
you look at our aircraft line, it's almost the wingtip is almost touching the uh, course line that we set up. Okay, for the carrier, and this is pretty much where you'd start your uh, turn into the next piece of the case one, which is rolling into the 180, the 90, and then the groove, and then touching down. Sweet. All right. So hopefully that uh, made some sense. So recapping real quick as you come past the carrier okay make sure you're at 800 feet 350 knots close as close to that as you can manage depending on how competent you are at getting to on speed and 600 feet is going to depend on how far past the ship you extend so if you're still learning it don't you know don't uh rush yourself don't give yourself not enough time to get yourself sorted so go 3.5 nautical mile go into the break and it's going to give you plenty of time so you can see i was mucking around as we we're cruising back towards the ship to get myself to on speed so i've trimmed the velocity vector into the e-bracket and then you're just looking to maintain 600 feet and keeping your uh, reciprocal bearing which is 169 as we cruise down as soon as you get to this position right here which is a beam the ship you're looking for 1.4 1.2 to 1.5 nautical mile a beam the ship which is where we're at right now and you want to be at 600 feet so we're 10 feet underneath where we need to be but uh as a first attempt on the fly i'm pretty happy with that all righty guys thank you for watching if you like the video make sure you give it a like and if you haven't already hit subscribe and subscribe to the youtube channel we're we cranking along here we're almost cracked 300 almost got 300 followers or subscribers i should say which is fucking crazy. I uh, didn't expect to get any anything like that. So thank you guys for showing your support. And lastly, if you haven't already, come on by and check me out on Twitch as well. I stream Monday to Friday at 1300 Australian Western Standard Time or 1 p.m. for the uh, non-military timed folk. And come in and say good day, hang out, give me some shit, and I'll see you guys, yeah, on the next one. All right, peace out, fuckers.